Hi, I'm Pastor Daniel Flukey from St. Peter Lutheran Church. We are a congregation of the ELCA in Green, Iowa. And today is Sunday, June 20th, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And it's good to be with you this morning. We'd love to know who's watching and who's joining us for worship. So if you'd comment below and say hi, we'd appreciate it. And we give thanks that God has brought you here today. If you'd like to give an offering to support our ministry here at St. Peter, you can donate online at www.stpetergreen.com giving, or you can drop off your offering here at the church office. Before I get into today's scripture and message, I need to share some sad news with you. Evelyn Van Raden, the eldest member of our congregation, died early on Wednesday morning at the age of 100. Her funeral service will be here at church on Tuesday at 1030, with visitation on Monday night uh, from 4 to 7 over at Rhett's Funeral Home. And I encourage you, do keep Evelyn's family and friends in your prayers. I also want to let you know, and this is, I think, the first time that I've mentioned this, on Sunday, July 11th, so what is that, three weeks from today, we are going to be having a special outdoor worship service at the main shelter at Perrin Park, and it'll be Cowboy Church. So there's a group called the Double J Wranglers. They're out of Shell Rock. They'll be coming here to lead us in sort of a country western style worship. Should be a lot of fun. I'm excited for it. So July 11th, Perrin Park Outdoor Worship, 9.30 a.m. Put it on your calendar. Hope you can join us. For today's message, I want to look at three different boat stories from Mark's Gospel. So here's the first of the boat stories. This is Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever seen the show Seinfeld? I know it's a couple decades old now at this point, but Kristen and I recently finished watching it. I'd never seen it before. And maybe you remember, one of the keys to the show is that the characters in Seinfeld do not grow. They don't learn anything from their experiences. And the show has its funny moments. Parts of it are really funny. But it's also frustrating to watch because these people keep making the same kinds of mistakes over and over again, getting fired from jobs, self-sabotaging in relationships, and after nine seasons, they're still just as self-centered and immature as they were at the beginning of the show. And I don't think that it's possible, I hope it's not possible, for people in real life to go through a decade of experience without any learning or growth. But there are moments in the Gospels where the disciples seem to be on precisely that track. Throughout Mark's gospel, the disciples, Jesus' followers, his close friends, are trying to figure out who Jesus is. They know that he's special. They've committed to following him. But as you read these stories in the gospel, you realize over and over, the disciples misunderstand what Jesus is doing, who he is. They underestimate him. Every time you think they've learned a lesson and they've made some progress, they seem to slide backwards and say something foolish. Of course, unlike the Seinfeld characters, there is some growth. The disciples do eventually make some progress, but it's painfully slow. Sometimes you want to grab them and say, don't you get it yet? You're literally walking around watching Jesus do miracles, 
how do you not understand who he is? So as I said, there's three stories in Mark's gospel where Jesus' disciples are on a boat with him. They're on a boat crossing the Sea of Galilee. And today's reading was the first of those in chapter 4. And right before this, Jesus had been teaching the crowds about how the kingdom of God is like seeds scattered on the ground. Maybe you remember hearing uh, the bishop's sermon about that last week. God's kingdom grows from even tiny little mustard seeds. And Jesus has even been explaining the meaning of some of these parables to his disciples. These are the insiders. These are the people who ought to understand. So that night, or maybe that afternoon, they get into the boat together and they head across to the other side of the lake, to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And suddenly, as they're in the boat, a storm comes up and they're in trouble. Waves are crashing into the boat. The disciples are convinced that they're going to drown. This is it. This is the end. Meanwhile, Jesus is asleep in the stern and they wake him up and they're panicking. Teacher, don't you care that we're in trouble? We're drowning here. Don't you care? So on some level, the disciples get it. They know Jesus can help. They're not just waking him up so he can see the world before he goes under. They seem to trust Jesus can save them, but they're not sure he will. So they're going to the right place, to the right person for help, but only because they're afraid and they have no other options. They have some faith, but it's far from mature. So Jesus wakes up and rebukes the storm, rebukes the wind, says to the sea, peace, be still. And miraculously, the storm stops. And Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And the disciples seem to get it. They're filled with awe. They they wonder to each other, whoa, who is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. They're figuring it out. They're growing in faith. Their fear of, you don't care, don't you care, has been turned into the wonder of, who is this? They're recognizing Jesus is more than just a great teacher. Jesus has power from God. And the Bible often uses the sea as this image of chaos, a symbol of evil power. So Jesus is doing more here, and the disciples get this. Jesus is doing more here than just changing the weather, more even than saving lives. Symbolically, he's doing something only God can do. He's changing the chaos into calm. He's demonstrating his power, revealing his identity as God in the flesh. So that's one boat story where the disciples learn Jesus has God's power to make even the wind and the sea obey him. And it's metaphorical too, right? Jesus can calm the storms in your life. That's a great takeaway from this story. Just as importantly, the disciples learn that Jesus really does care about them. They learn they don't need to be afraid, only to trust in Jesus. And maybe that trust is most important during the storm, when it's hard to see Jesus, when he's asleep in the boat. But he does care. So let's jump ahead two chapters to another boat story. If you have a Bible, you can follow along. We're in Mark chapter 6. And this second boat story comes right after what's really Jesus' greatest miracle yet, greatest miracle to this point, the feeding of the 5,000. And we'll hear John's version of the full story in August, in a couple months. But the short version is that with just five loaves and two fish, Jesus feeds a crowd of 5,000 plus people. Mark says, everyone ate and was satisfied And the disciples gathered up 12 baskets of leftovers. So here's Mark chapter 6, 45 to 52. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side to Bethesda. Well, he dismissed the crowd. Bethsaida, excuse me, to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea and Jesus was alone on the land. 
when he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and they cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. So again, the disciples see Jesus, but they don't know who he is. They don't recognize him. They think he's a ghost floating on the water, and they're terrified. It's like they've learned nothing. They should have faith, but they're right back to fear. They've watched Jesus calm storms before. They've watched him provide for people in trouble, but they still don't trust him. Their hearts are hard. And so Jesus has mercy on them, and he comes into the boat with them. And when Jesus gets into their boat, the wind ceases. It's all okay. And surely this time, the disciples will understand. With all the evidence they've seen, they'll really trust him now, right? Their their faith has to be maturing. Well, two chapters later in the story, Jesus feeds another large crowd. And this story often gets overlooked because it's not as impressive as the feeding of the 5,000 was in chapter 6. This time, chapter 8, there's 4,000, and there's seven loaves and a few small fish. So two more loaves of bread and a thousand fewer people. Really, it's still pretty impressive, right? But it's a little anticlimactic after the last time. Oh, and only seven baskets of leftovers are found this time, not 12. Not quite as much food. But again, Jesus and the disciples get into the boat to cross the lake, and this time there's no storm or adverse wind. Apparently it's actually a nice day out. But listen to what happens. This is Mark chapter 8, verses 14 to 21. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And Jesus cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, Twelve? And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, seven. Then he said to them, do you not yet understand? And you can hear the frustration in Jesus' voice, right? Do you not yet understand? Are your eyes shut? How do you not remember? Seriously, I just proved for the second time that I can feed thousands of people with only a few loaves of bread. There's only a dozen of you in this boat, and you have a loaf of bread. How are you possibly worried about food? And yet, even though he gets frustrated, Jesus does not give up on them. And maybe for you and I today, perhaps that's the good news for us. For us, who are so often like these forgetful, fearful, unfaithful disciples, there's good news in Jesus' response. We have seen God's faithfulness. We have the stories right here, passed down for thousands of years. We have evidence all around us of God's work, of God's faithfulness. We have evidence in our own lives. God is faithful. God provides. And yet, we are still afraid, aren't we? We're afraid of what's going to happen to us in the future. We're afraid of what might happen to our church, of what's happening to our world. We're afraid of not having enough. We're afraid of being overwhelmed by the storms. Despite all the evidence we've been given, we still fall back into wondering if God cares for us, afraid that we're not good enough or faithful enough. But here's the hopeful part. 
even the disciples do eventually grow in faith. Fear does not get the last word. Rather than giving up on this group of timid, foolish, forgetful followers, Jesus does the opposite. He trusts his ministry to them. On Easter morning, when Jesus rises from the dead, the message from the angel to the women who find the empty tomb is to go and tell who? To tell Jesus' disciples that he's alive, that he's going on ahead of them. These are the saints who found the church, who in turn trust the message to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are often timid and foolish, forgetful like the disciples. Send your Holy Spirit to build us up in faith, to help us to grow as your followers, to grow in trusting you. Open our eyes so that we might see who you truly are. Open our hearts so that we might trust you in the midst of the storms of our lives, that we might recognize you are in the boat with us, even when we worry that you're asleep. Lord, thank you for never giving up on us, no matter how many times we fail to live up to your call. Help us to follow you always through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, again, thank you for joining me today online. Next weekend for worship, we'll have an online sermon again, but in person for services on June 26 and 27, we're going to be celebrating a weekend of hope here at St. Peter, and that'll support Butler County Relay for Life. So there are luminary bags available here at church. They're on a table in the fellowship hall. And we're asking for a $10 donation per bag. You can get those in honor of someone with cancer or in memory of someone. And then we'll be blessing them next weekend during those in-person worship services and passing on all the donations we receive to Butler County's Relay for Life to support the American Cancer Society. So call the church office or stop by this week if that's something you'd like to support. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.